we are back. What up, guys? It's another episode, my second episode, actually. And this episode is very special to me because I'm extremely proud of this guy. I actually know this guy. <laughs> He's a WPGC alumni. Yeah. Uh, he used to be an intern, and uh, now he's he's ripping up, ripping it up in Hollywood. Red carpets, as you can see. This guy is on a, a very popular TV show on CBS on Monday nights called Superior Do- Donuts. He plays the character Sweatpants. Uh, he's a writer. He's definitely a comedian extraordinaire. You can go to YouTube and check out his set on Conan, which was extremely funny. And uh, we're going to get into all that stuff, but I want to introduce you to my guy, Rail battle. What up, Rail? Young, young Big Feezy. This my dude, Ray. Feezy Leo. <laughs> you, you, you've come a long way. Yeah, we had fun, man. From, uh, the, from the back of them PGC uh, <laughs> the buses <laughs> passing out flyers. Clay has come a long All way. Oh, here we go. We're, we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about we'll that. We'll get into that later, man. <laughs> so what I want you to do, I want you to explain to the people, because this, this series that I'm doing is actually um, is to show people that, you know, uh, I have a nine to five, but I also grind in the music business with my mm-hmm. artists. And I'm showing people that, you know, regardless of your situation, you should still chase your dreams. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just getting in depth with them and letting them know uh, the people that I, how deep my relationships run in this industry. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, this can happen for them as well. So once you get into it, let the people know about your grind coming from being an intern here at the radio station to, you know, uh, starting your comedy career. Uh, yeah, man, I went to, uh, I went to uh, uh, University of Maryland, College Park. I was looking for an internship. Um, PGC, I grew up. I grew up Georgia Ave, and I also grew up Oxon Hill area. So this is like been the home radio station for me mm-hmm. forever, and it's just like the biggest opportunity to come work for PGC. I got the internship, and I saw how hard it was to work and to uh, to be there every day pursuing something. And um, it also gave me a connection to our local celebrities or whatever, like you know at the time the Big Tiggers and the Donnie Simpsons. So I was able to see more than just you know my neighborhood. And so uh, once I worked here for a summer, I learned how hard it was to, to get to the next level. So I took that, applied that to stand up comedy. And just, uh, you know, after you clean out the WPGC office for six weeks straight, sweaty, it's nothing to, to go to a couple open mics and take some L's and uh, learn how to, how to get good in the game. So um, that all started from just, you know, we're from a city of grinders, man. They just kind of right. excelled at over the course of time. So, yeah. What, what was your first big stand-up show? Like, what was your first big set? Big what, set? Or yeah. Like, the set that you felt like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on to something. Oh man, my was first... it TV? Was it the improv in LA? Like, who was on the show with you? Where did you was like, oh, I'm on the show with such and such, so it's on now. I host a show in uh, LA called Chocolate Sundays, which is like um, everybody their mom has done the show from Cat Williams to Kevin Hart. It's just like the big LA show um, that every celebrity that comes in town for the Grammys, for mm-hmm. like MTV or whatever, they all stop by. Every celebrity stops by that show. And I was, I remember I couldn't get into Laugh Factory. I'd be outside trying to get in. Let me get in. They'd be like, nah, you won't know you. So uh, my man, Ron G, who's a comedian out there, let me get in. Ron G. You know Ron G? Shout out, I don't know him, but I, I know him from TV. Good dude, yeah. Yeah. So he let me get in, and then uh, I, was just, I was there every Sunday, like, let me get up, let me get up. Because every time, it was, it, was the hottest show in the, it was the hottest show in the city. And uh, one day, the, the young guy who didn't go up on the first part, you know, they give you know, new guys three minutes. Uh, he didn't go up. He, was, uh, he didn't show up, but he was late or whatever happened. And I'm in the corner every day, like, rabbit from 8 Mile, like, it's only one <laughs> shot, not. You know, I'm in the corner. And uh, they go, hey. Terrell, go over and do a quick three minutes. And I go, you know, I had to get my shit together. This is my yeah, spot. Yeah. And um, I got focused. I get my jokes together. And I went up there. And I did a really good job. And then uh, they ended up letting me host the first part of the new guy show. So then I, I got a job off that night. So um, it's just about uh, opportunity meets preparation. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's it. The time to do it. Yeah that, was, yeah, that was a big one for me. So where did the acting come in? Like the acting perspective? Um, at Maryland, I did, I did theater at Maryland. And then um, I ended up moving. To, um, I ended up wanting to work in radio. Um, after Maryland, that didn't work out. I just, you know, it was just tough for me. Yeah, he, he, he had to clean out the closet. <laughs> I had to clean out. I thought it was gonna be like I thought I was gonna show up. I'm there on day one, day two. I'm um, I'm on radio. I'm, I'm Donnie Simpson's part. I felt like I was gonna be a little big ticket. My, my goal was to be big ticket. I was like my real talk. My dream was to be big ticket. Um, coming up, and um, I came out. I was an intern. It didn't work. Shout out, out Tig. Tig, what up? Tig. It didn't work out like I wanted it to. I didn't understand the, the game and how to really how the grind goes. And so um. I ended up trying to move to uh, New York to do radio. I went to New York for a summer. Like the summer after, I worked at MTV as an intern. And then um, I was like, all right, radio might not be my thing. And so uh, I had I worked in theater. So I ended up saying, well, I've done radio, I've done theater. Let me go to L.A. and pursue it. And I just jumped out there and, and started really grinding and working hard to, uh, to build that, that, that part of my, my craft. Yeah. So, was, so what was your first um, 
major role? Was it a, were you an extra in something or what was your work, first speaking role? The first thing I ever did was, um, <laughs> I played a slave. Okay, I thought you were about to say I did porn. Nah, I nah, 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 I ain't do porn. Uh, they'll play it now. <laughs> I played a, a slave in a Ving Rhames movie. It was Anthony Mackie and Ving Rhames and, uh, and I was a slave and nobody's ever seen it. I don't think it ever really came out. But the first thing I had was I was a slave and I was just an extra and I was like, I figured out a way how I can get a little bit more screen time. And so um, I just was funny on set. Mm -hmm. I was trying, I was joking, making fun, you know, making fun of Ving Rang. I was doing Pulp Fiction impressions, just being whatever, a little right, stupid DC right. dude. And then uh, a scene came where they had a, Anthony Mackie had to pick up a slave and put him on his shoulder. And at the time I was about 130 pounds. And so I became the slave that Anthony Mackie throws on his shoulder. I was like, yeah, that's my spot right there. So I made it. Yeah, they, so, hey, <laughs> it's, hey, it ain't, hey, we it ain't what type small. of role you have. Exactly. It's what you do with the role. You know what I'm saying? So now you have a very successful TV show on uh, CBS on Monday nights called Superior Donuts with uh, Jermaine Fowler and uh, OG Jed, Jud, Judd Hirsch. Mm -hmm. um, and Jermaine is from D.C. as well. Yeah. So we got D.C. Yeah. running Hollywood right now. I can go that far, but we're all right. Nah, we okay. running. Nah, <laughs> we, 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 we running right now, cuz. So I want to say, um, what, is, what is it like being on set with, first of all, is it any pressure being on set with Judd Hirsch? And um, cause sweatpants is a very he's a funny dude. Mm -hmm. I love my my favorite episode is when he told you get a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you gotta get a job. He's like, what? <laughs> um, is it, is it pressure with Judd? Uh, yes and no, because you know you know how great he is. His accolades. He's won you know Emmys. He was on Taxi and Independence Day and all these great television projects. But um, you know I wasn't really. I wasn't hired to like go toe to toe as an actor with him. Uh, my, my role was just to be funny in the, in those particular moments, so I could do that. So if they didn't, when they give me like real scenes with Judd, it's like oh shit, now I'm nervous. I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm there two hours early to get it together, but most of the time I get to come in and kind of do my type of funny. So I know my area. I know how to stay in my lane. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm if I'm playing you know if I'm playing a, a, a lineman, I know how to block. I don't gotta run and get you know catch the ball in the corner or whatever. So. I knew my goal, what I had to do, and all I could do now is just watch Judd and learn from him. He's a great actor, so I'm picking up stuff, if anything. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it helped out my, my skills as an actor as well. Okay, you did a uh, guest spot on The Good Doctor as yeah. well. Yeah, I got my abs right for that one, fam. Yeah. In case ladies is watching. So what, what's in the future? Like, any movies or you, any, uh, you know? Any I'm, actually, I'm actually on tour right now. Um, this is my second stop on my tour. I went to Vancouver from D.C. I go to New York tomorrow, and I got Connecticut, and I got to go to Phoenix, and then to Edmonton. Um, so I'm on tour right now for the summer. And then we're gonna get back. Uh, I'm gonna be writing on some shows coming this fall, so that's gonna be pretty exciting, man. Okay. Yeah. Recently, recently, I've uh, I've been watching you, and recently I've seen you. Um, you've been kept. You you've been chilling with Will Smith and Dave Chappelle, bro. Yeah, we having fun, man. You know what I mean? I see you. I mean, I'm like, look at my youngin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at my youngin, real. <laughs> what, what what are you actually doing with Will and um? Uh, Will and has Dave a Chappelle? Will has a show called The Bucket List. It's on Facebook Live right now. Where every episode he does, like, you know, Will's just, he's the world. He's a universal, fun loving dude who does new things to expand himself every day. And uh, so every episode on Facebook Live, he, uh, he achieves a new bucket list item, whether it's jumping out of a helicopter, whether it's swimming with sharks, uh, whether it's Bollywood dancing. Um, one particular episode, he wanted to try stand up comedy. So um, they had his people reach out to a couple of comics they knew who, were, who they felt like were talented. And, uh, they brought us in, and uh, we all picked You were one of them. I was one of the guys they liked. That's a good look. Shout out to Lucas Kaiser for that one. Um, and they brought us in. We all pitched ideas to Will. He liked my stuff, and he took me with him. We went to Vegas. We, we went around for like two weeks working on an act for him to try to stand up. And then um, Chappelle was going like, yo, come do my show. And then Chappelle came through and gave Will some advice, you know, for the show. And um, we wrote a great set. We performed it at uh, that Chappelle's show. And then um, now I just help Will whenever he's like, he needs some help with writing certain things. We just kind of get together. And I get to write for, help write for one of the gods of entertainment, man. It's, it's the, one of my best gigs. Yeah. Keep it a hundred. Yeah. When you heard it was Will Smith, how did you react? You know what's funny, man? I was like. I know you real. Keep yeah. it a hundred. <laughs> I'm keep it hundred. I wasn't, I wasn't really gassed because like I live in LA. LA, you know, in other cities, it's like, it's, a, it's like, wow. And in LA, you can see Eddie Murphy at the, at the Starbucks. You can see, you know, Rihanna. At the mall, you know what I'm uh, saying. What, what, what mall is this? In yeah. LA, in LA, in, Fox Hills. In, like, Fox yeah. Hill, you can see Rihanna you can see, there. It's Fox LA. Hill, I'm on the so, way. So I wasn't tripping, and then I met him. I still wasn't tripping because it was like, all right, I met a couple people. I'm, I met Kat. I'm, I'm good with Kevin. I know me and Marlon, Marlon Wayne's the big homie. I'm like, I'm good with celebrities. I'm all right. Then he's like, come to my house, 
The nigga's like, oh, wow, this is Will Smith. Then he's like, yo, hey, I got to go to Vegas tomorrow. Can you come with us to Vegas? I said, all right, I'm going to meet you at LAX the airport. He said, no, no, we're going to Van Nuys. I say, that's private jets. He's like, yeah, I'm Will Smith. So <laughs> then it was like, oh, this is real now. Now I'm, I'm living that life. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? We rolled up to... Uh, we said, you oh, deserve it. You deserve I mean, it, right? Hard. You deserve it, baby. You deserve it. We rolled up. It. I'm taking you through up to the hotel. Um, and I, we go to the hotel to check in. I'm like, oh, y'all might have gave me this crazy room with the door. You walk in and it's, it's at the wind, special wind. And then the windows open for you and they play music you like. It's crazy. And I go, hey, y'all must have gave me uh, Will's room. Um, this might be the wrong one. They go, nah, that's your room on Will. So it's like, okay, this is the life that it's, you got famous, you got superstar, you got out of here. Out of here. He's that's a whole his fame is a whole nother level. Yeah, that's what out of so, here is when you go in your hotel room and it's like five white girls. Yeah. They yeah. know they know your musical preferences and your temperature. <laughs> Everything. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm at the, I don't get that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I mean, so you rolling with Will now. I mean, will, 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 will I happen to see you in Bad Boys Three? Listen, man. I I'm, mean, is that? Listen, I mean, I, I, can you talk about it? I mean, I, let me uh, know. No, listen, I tell you, no. I tried. <laughs> let me say so. I said emails, text. Hey, Will, what's up? Hey, Big Willie. No, I, I tried. They still shooting. I'm hoping for a call. Like, That's a, hey, Will, put my man in the movie. I'll be liking all the pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I wish, bro. That would be not have been a dream come true, man. Well, man, I'm, I'm extremely proud of you, bro. Thank you, thank coming you. from WPGC intern to doing your thing in Hollywood. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm going to support you continuously, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So all my nine to fivers out there, don't let nothing stop you. I'm telling you, your job, school, whatever you do, keep chasing. This is a prime example of what happens when you keep chasing. Thank you for tuning in. Second episode of Why Trust the Bus Driver. I'm going to check you guys later. Peace.